Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining our meeting today. Of course. Hi. Hello. The purpose of this meeting is to observe data patterns around the Math Common Formative Assessment, CFA. Each of you has a folder with the team's data that has been disaggregated based on subgroups of race, ethnicity, socioeconomic status, English learners, gender, and students with disabilities. We'll be following our usual protocol to analyze the data and come up with an action plan for next steps. These kids aren't learning anything we're teaching. We are working way too hard with no return. They don't have the skills needed. And we observed that on the last data analysis. They never do their homework or their assignments and their parents don't value education. I am just fed up. And I don't see the purpose of having this little meeting. This is a waste of my time. Uh-oh, here we go. My training and equity work have prepared me to lead teams through their PLC. And I'm here to help create a space built on trust. But Mr. Glenn always seems so defensive. And there's a new teacher sitting right next to him. Let's hope I can keep this conversation positive and develop strategies, not just for him, but for the whole team. After all, we're all here to support student success. The best I can do is encourage others to speak their minds and help give Mr. Glenn much needed alternative perspectives. I am just fed up and I don't see the purpose of having these little meetings. I am done. Mr. Glenn is kind of making this meeting a little awkward already. I know this is only my first year as a teacher, but I feel like I have a lot of new insights to offer here, uh, particularly to some of our more experienced teachers. As a person who recognizes my own privilege, I know I need to do my best to uplift the experiences of all student subgroups, while also promoting equity in the classroom. I guess it's up to me to say something first. Uh, well. Well, um, I think this process is very valuable and, and helpful in analyzing root causes to um, identify next steps. And I've seen my class making significant progress. Although students are not yet at the proficiency level on all the math standards, you can tell that they have been improving in their knowledge and skills as mathematicians. Uh, for example, with uh, elaborating their answers, you can especially tell that our English learner students have really improved based on their responses. And uh, Mrs. Stevens, the accountable talk strategies really had an impact. So uh, honestly, thank you for your hard work and uh, uh, facilitation of our PLC process. Wow, that is a huge celebration, Mr. Anderson. Wow, that is a huge celebration, Mr. Anderson. I totally agree with Mr. Anderson. In my almost 15 years of experience as a teacher, I always get excited when students succeed. Growing up, I noticed teachers did not always create equitable learning environments and lacked consideration for students' backgrounds, including my own. This systemic issue is something I have pledged to undo. Going over the data and giving my perspective will hopefully not only support what Mr. Anderson is saying, but also show Mr. Glenn that the students can and will do well, given the proper environment we as teachers are responsible for. That's one of my favorite strategies as it scaffolds students by encouraging elaboration on their math answers. Wow, that is a huge celebration, Mr. Anderson. I have been a teacher for 25 years, longer than most of the people at this table. The girl next to me was probably in diapers when I started teaching. The students in my class, they develop the requisite skills they need because of me. If the parents are not involved or come from less than educated backgrounds, <laughs> there is only so much I can do. These meetings are such a waste of my time, just like the diversity trainings they sent me to. Why go over all this data when I know what is best for my students? 
I am tired of teachers being solely to blame for low test scores and students not achieving. I'm not holding back. No more Mr. Nice Guy. What I'm noticing is my students are grasping the concept of showing their work. What I'm noticing is my students are grasping the concepts of showing their work. And now they're making fewer mistakes. As my data indicates, 45% have demonstrated mastery in one of the three success criteria. Wow. And we're just one week in yeah. the minute of Yeah, yeah, that's because your parents are involved and value education. And see, Mr. Glenn is once again making everyone uncomfortable. As the team leader, it's important at this point to make sure that we stick to the data, not preconceived notions, and reframe situations if necessary. And value education. All of your parents have degrees, yes? Man, it must be nice to have the advanced classes and less of the subgroups. Whoa. I'm done. If you look at the data, all of our students are progressing. And when considering our subgroups, all groups are making gains. If you look at the data, all of our students are progressing. And when considering our subgroups, all groups are making gains. Ouch. I'm wondering how we can challenge Mr. Glenn and disrupt his deficit thinking. We need to move forward to identify and build on the assets of our students. For a lifelong teacher, I'm surprised he still doesn't understand the harm in a deficit mindset. I observed in your data, Mr. Glenn, several highlights. One being that students are conceptually understanding what the problems are asking. And I agree with you, Ms. Garcia. They are showing their work, which allows them to correct their mistakes. And Mr. Anderson, as you pointed out, students are able to elaborate on their answers. Oh, okay, okay. What are your thoughts about this? I mean, don't you agree that students do better when their parents have a degree and uh, their culture values education? Oh, geez. <laughs> don't you agree that kids do better when their parents have a degree and their Wait, culture? Wait, what? Is Mr. Glenn assuming that because of my ethnicity that I would agree with him? Does he think that all Asians have degrees in the same culture or that we all are model minorities? Why can't he see that families from all backgrounds want the best for their children? As educators, that is our responsibility. In my fifth year as a teacher, this isn't the first time I've witnessed this stereotype. It's honestly exhausting at this point. Mr. Glenn has been here for a while and I'm a new member, so I'm not sure how to deal with him. I don't know. I think as educators, we should be... Uh, let, let's think about how well we know our families. And what more can we do to know them better so that we can partner with them to support their students' success? Oh. 